everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is a video where we are going to chat about my favorite velvety leaves. This video is also sponsored by Squarespace. More about them a little bit later. But yeah, I'm really excited to share with you about my favorite velvety leaves. It is one of my favorite leaf textures out there. Uh, I mean, there's a few like glossy, fuzzy, velvety, all of the above are amazing. We're gonna kick it off with one of my favorite, most unexpected velvety leaves, and that is the Hoya Linearis. Now, I have to be transparent with you guys. I am in the middle of propagating this, and it went really, really badly. I was propagating it in water, and it mostly just completely rotted. So I'm going to be doing a different method. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to stick it in sphagnum moss, and just keep that moss very moist. Um, I have had success propagating linearis in water one other time, and it just, you know, maybe it was a fluke. But anyway, I have propagated it via the butterfly method in sphagnum moss before, and it took a really long time, but it did end up working out. But I'd like to keep this plant like as solid as I can. So I'm trying to just propagate it as is like this. So we'll see how it goes. Keep your fingers crossed for this plant because we lost like probably a good like six or seven inches because like this basically everything that like fit into this jar rotted off. Awesome, it was very stinky as well. <laughs> but anyway, point is the Hoya Linearis, I did not expect at all for it to be fuzzy or velvety, but it is, which is so great. It's very, very soft to the touch. Um, it's a very delicate Hoya, so definitely have not figured out the care like completely, but I would say that it doesn't like to dry out completely. Um, that is pretty much the consensus that I've had from the care that I've given it and also what other people have shared in the comments. I feel like if you get a super established plant as it is, it'll be a lot easier to care for. I mean, honestly, I feel that way about most plants. Like the more established it is, the easier care it will be. But generally, I would say that it is one of the Hoya that like to stay a little bit more moist. And I do find that it likes light quite a bit. I try to keep it in a much more sunny part of my plant room if possible. But with that comes drying out faster, which I think is what ended up making this plant ultimately really unhappy, which was the reason I had to propagate it in the first place. So anyway, Hoya Linearis, my unexpected dark horse for this video. It's just such an awesome and beautiful, unique plant. Like this growth habit is just so beautiful. It looks a lot like a Ripsalis or a jungle cactus, um, but it's a Hoya and it's really unique and I really love it a lot. Okay, next up, talking about unique plants. This is my Anthurium doriaki and I'm actually like getting butterflies just looking at this plant in the viewfinder. This is one of the Anthurium that have really, really had a huge turnaround ever since I made those changes in the greenhouse cabinet. So what were those changes? Let's do a roundup quickly because I know that I've mentioned it in several videos lately, but if you're just catching me now or you missed those videos. So the first thing I did was I potted all of my Anthurium in glazed ceramic. So that's like white pots, or I even did like a couple of plastic pots, but generally I potted them out of terracotta. And this is something that you guys were telling me to do for a really long time. And I was just being stubborn and I didn't wanna do it, but I finally did. And it was literally one of the best things I could have done because it takes them a lot longer to dry out now. And if you're familiar with Anthurium, they really don't enjoy drying out completely, at least in my experience. Um, but that's what I was doing for so long because they were in terracotta. And with my watering habits, things just fell to the wayside, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. So anyway, next up, I put sphagnum moss around the base of the plant. As you can see, we have like a little nest looking situation here and that is sphagnum moss. And what this does is it promotes extra moisture and humidity just like right around that plant. That's gonna last a lot longer um, as long as the sphagnum moss is like moist. Obviously, I only wet that down when I water the plant. So um, I don't know, it's not like a super long-term thing because as you can see, it's already dry as it is, but anyway. I just, once I did that, we had some serious changes. So I'm thinking that that was a part of it. <laughs> um, it also helps that if the plant is going to start rooting, this is like getting heavy for me. 
Um, it also helps that when the plant has those aerial roots, they have somewhere to go. So it just helps the plant to have a little bit more security as well. Um, I did a sort of fake pot up situation with my Anthurium clarinervium just to like prolong the pot that it's currently in because the stem is getting really long and it's starting to sort of sway and I really don't want it to snap. But anyway, the next thing that happened was I just put a lot more plants in that greenhouse cabinet and now the humidity sits at about like 75 to 80% all the time. And I think that was probably the number one change that I made that made the biggest difference. Um, and really all I did was just put more plants in it. Before it was pretty sparse. I didn't have a lot of large plants in my cabinet and now I have big ones. So I think all of that soil and the moss and just the extra moisture just brings up that humidity quite a bit. And you know, people always told me that if your environment is very humid, your anthurium will put out big leaves. And I thought that it was humid in there at like 55, 65%. And so now that it's been consistently above that, I'm getting anthurium leaves that are like record size. Like for example, this is the leaf that it put out right before this one. Like look at the size difference. You would think that would take years to size up that much, Nope, it just took making a couple of changes. So if you're out there and you really like Anthurium and you're kind of struggling, honestly, I'm gonna say a closed environment is amazing for them. I know there's gonna be people out there who say otherwise that they don't necessarily need a ton of humidity, but I'm gonna say that they're gonna be <laughs> incredibly happy if they do have it. Will they survive without it? Definitely. Um, you can make up for it by just supplementing more water, but this humidity trick and the moss trick and the lace ceramic pot trick. Honestly, the combination of that is like the greatest thing I've ever done for them. And we are getting beautiful velvety leaves like this. Like this leaf is so round and beautiful. It's exactly what I always wanted this plant to do. And um, I'm just really happy with it. It's absolutely perfect. As mentioned before, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building your brand and building an online presence. So I've actually made two websites with Squarespace already, my personal De La Plants website, which will be launching soon, and then the Potted Together website for my podcast. So if you didn't know, I do have a podcast. And on our website, we sell merch. We also have show notes up there. So if you know there's any notes from an episode that we need to share, sort of like a blog situation. So through Squarespace, we were able to open a shop. We even connected a third party to it because we don't do the fulfillment for our merch. One of my favorite ways to beautify a website and keep it up to date is to connect a social media account to it. So we also did that for Pot It Together. So we have like a scrolling bar at the bottom of the website with all of our posts so that, I don't know, I just think that it's nice to have updated photos on the website, but it can be hard to do that all the time. So having something like a social media integration is really nice. So if you're wanting to start an online presence through a website, I would highly suggest Squarespace. You can head to squarespace.com to try a free trial. And then once your trial ends, you can go to squarespace.com slash Becca De La Plants to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. The next plant we're going to discuss is my Syndapsis pictus. So this plant, you guys, I need to relax for a second. I've been sitting up pinched straight and my back hurts. <laughs> anyway, this plant is so, so lovely. I love how striking these leaves are. The details on these leaves is seriously incredible. I love that each leaf is like sort of, sort of similar, but also all unique. It's a plant that's also very vocal. So when it's thirsty, it will let you know, as you can see mine, the leaves are starting to curl up and what they'll do is they'll curl in like this and make little tacos. That's how you know that it's thirsty, but otherwise the leaves are super flat and it just looks absolutely beautiful. It's a trailing plant. I have seen people grow them as shinglers, which means that they put them like on a plank of wood and the plant literally just like suctioned itself to the wood, but I really like them as trailers. I actually recently cut mine because it was putting off like a long piece that was had like tiny little leaves. So whenever that happens, I honestly just cut it off and it's usually not even worth propagating. I just toss it because the leaves are literally like the size of a quarter, not worth propagating in my opinion. Um, if you want to totally fine, they'll propagate really great in water. But for me, I was like, eh, not worth my time right now. So anyway, 
Um, I have it potted in terracotta and also in De La Tanks. All of these have been potted in, in De La Tanks so far besides the Linearis. The Linearis was in De La Tanks before it like tried to kick the bucket. It likes all of the, you know, air and that fluffy soil. And I just think it's a lovely plant for um, anybody who is a beginner or if you are experienced and you just want something easy that will add interest, this is a great one. Oh geez, I need my ceiling fan. <laughs> And the last plant that I'm going to discuss today is my, um, okay. <laughs> and the last plant that I'm going to discuss today is my Philodendron Splendid. This is easily like top five favorite plants in my collection. Although that Doriaki leaf kind of <laughs> might not get out of the top five, I don't really know. Um, but anyway, this is the Splendid and it is a cross between the Philodendron Melanochrysum and the Philodendron Varicosum, which on their own are kind of fussy and annoying plants, to be honest with you. I've had both of them on multiple occasions. <laughs> and I actually, when I went to the Equigenera pop-up in Colombia here, I was this close to buying a varicosum. Like there was a really, really pretty one, but I've just had really terrible luck with them. They need a lot of humidity that, in my experience, and that is. Uh, lots of humidity, which maybe I could like provide them now, but I, when I had them in Arizona, it was definitely a no-go. So this one is just a really nice hybrid because it takes the good from both of its parents and creates a new plant that is actually super hardy. I really was not expecting that. Um, it just looks really good. And as you can see, I have it growing up a wood plank right now. And I recently chopped and propped this plant so that um, I would have only large leaves because it started out as having really big leaves and it was actually gifted to me by somebody in the plant community. And um, I was so happy with the leaves. They were just absolutely shockingly beautiful and big. But once the leaves started coming out, <laughs> from my care. They were like this big and really unimpressive. They honestly looked like melanochrysum leaves, which I don't really like the philodendron melanochrysum. Okay, I've already talked about why I don't like the varicosum, but the melanochrysum, it just likes to throw out runners and most of the time it looks like a glorified micans, which is like another velvety leaf plant, which is amazing, but it's not the same as what a melanochrysum should be. You know, melanochrysum are known for putting out really, really long, velvety, heart-shaped leaves. And um, <laughs> when they're not growing in the right environment or in the right like plank situation, the leaves tend to be um, really small and look like micans. So anyway, <laughs> so as you can see, we've got that leaf down there. And then we've got this one, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And then we've got this one, they just get better and better, honestly. Look at how perfect and beautiful that is. Um, and then after the plant finally rooted and propagated itself, it put out, how can I show you this? <laughs> it put out this leaf right here, which was a lot smaller than the previous leaf, or maybe not a lot smaller, but it was definitely smaller than the previous leaf, but I was okay with that because it was still a good size. And um, I figured that it was just a little bit smaller because the plant was focusing on rooting. But we do actually have a new leaf coming in. This is so hard to show you because I'm trying to like hold it up uh, because this plank is probably like eight feet tall. You can see the new leaf here. It does look like it's going to be pretty big. So I'm excited to see what it ends up looking like. Um, if it'll pull more melanochrysum or if it'll pull more varicosum, I don't really know. Uh, but the backs of these leaves are also like, they have like a nice like reddish tint, which is definitely from the varicosum. It's just such a cool plant. I love it. And it's so velvety and soft, like truly, truly so, so soft. So I will keep you updated on how this new leaf goes. You can check out my Instagram, De La Plants and I will share updates over there. Thank you so much friends for hanging out with me today while we chat about some velvety leaves. If you have any favorite velvety leaves, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you have any of the plants that I mentioned and you want to add any information about them, that would be really awesome too. But generally, if you like houseplant content like this, you can come around more often and subscribe. I make videos every Tuesday and Thursday, usually alternating between like a video like this and a plant vlog. I like to have a little bit of variety. So <laughs> anyway, hope that you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.